Welcome to another year of cloud contact. For the past few years, every year, I've been doing a couple of videos about certifications and what I think you should get for this year. The whole idea around it is that as a engineer, a consultant and an employer, I sort of look back on the past 12 months and I look at where the industry is heading and I really look at where I think most engineers and consultants can improve on and what can actually make you more valuable to an employer such as Cloud Context. So today in this video, let's talk about the certifications I think are invaluable in 2023 and the ones that I think you guys should aspire to. I'll give you a bit of a breakdown for each one. I'm gonna give you three today and I'll give you a bit of a breakdown. I'll give you why I think it's one of the certifications that's very important and why I think you should. Get. So let's remind ourselves why certificates are important. I do get this question a lot. I get it from the YouTube channel. I get it from LinkedIn and I get it from just general day to day when seeking with engineers and consultants. First and foremost, the study you undertake to pass these certs is invaluable learning. From my experience and from actually studying these certs and passing these certs, I think that the lessons you learn and the experience that you get from actually doing the labs and learning this material is invaluable and it does directly translate into real world tasks that you may complete in a job in a Microsoft Azure space or a Microsoft 365 space or pretty much any Microsoft Cloud space. So when you actually land these roles, I think it's very important that you have a bit of experience and you have that learning and that value that you've got from those certs and from studying those certs. And a cert is just a way to actually show that you have that learning. Secondly, the certificates are for you. I say this all the time, I say it in job interviews, I say it to engineers, I say it to people that report to me, the certifications are for you. Yes, your organization is telling you, please go get these certifications because it's great for us as an organization to have these skill sets and it's great for us to be able to go to Microsoft and say that we have these skills and these certs and these badges and it really elevates our partnership. Yep, that's fine, I get that. But what's most important is that that certificate is yours. No matter where you go, no matter where you work, no matter who you work with, that certification is something that you own and you earned. They'll always be attached to you. That is something I have noticed is not really that well understood. It may be understood, but people really need to understand that it's something you should be doing for yourself. They're attractive to employers. Why? Because basically employers can sell you out to customers much easier if you have certifications and if you've proved that you are an invaluable resource in this certain tech stack. It also shows that you are committed to your career. For example, if there's someone that's passing through just using IT to fill their time, quite unlikely they're gonna go for a certification because it takes a lot of time and effort to do so. It really shows that you really wanna progress in your career and that you're taking it seriously. And that may be the difference between you getting a job or not. As usual, Microsoft have added a whole bunch of certifications into the lineup and I think that is great because the platforms are growing so quick and so vastly, it's important that there is multiple certifications for each learning. Now remember, I base my recommendations based on what I see in the industry based over the past 12 months. So I sort of look forward and I determine what customers are going to be expecting for the next 12 months based on the previous 12 months and what tech has been highly sought after and what skills have been highly sought after by our customers. So I've picked three today that I want to discuss. Obviously, I'm not going to pick the ones that I always say are bread and butter. So things like Azure Administrator, Microsoft Administrator, those are the ones that I really think you just need to do. If you are working in Azure every day, if you're working in 365 every day, you need to do the administrator certifications and you need to be able to prove that you have passed the bar. You need to be able to show your employer that you have actually put that time and effort in to doing those certifications and you are working with something every day that you are actually certified in. So let's not even mention those. Now one of the ones that I have noticed has come available now is SC100, Microsoft Cyber Security Architect. If you're looking to amp up your career in the cybersecurity space, if you've got a bit of Microsoft Azure background, a bit of Microsoft 365 background, and you're really looking to amp up that cybersecurity learning and understanding, then this is the one for you. Based off the past 12 months and based off what I project to be the next 12 months, there's a lot of focus at the moment about zero trust and about how we can further secure our environments, especially the ones that are already in Microsoft and the ones that are actually leveraging a lot of these services that Microsoft have to offer. So what's in this exam? Okay, we have zero trust architecture. We have GRC, so governance, risk and compliance. We have designing security for infrastructure. We have designing security strategies for data and applications and helping you understand security best practices so you can better consult on them pretty much. So there are five main things that are going to be in the exam. A lot of those are things that you're probably working on day to day. 
I mean, lots of people are working on zero trust architecture. Lots of people are working on GRC. It's really important for you to go and get certified. So your next job interview or your next promotion where you're going and asking for the promotion, you can sort of use that as leverage to get more money. All of those five things are really things that I think most engineers consultants really need to focus on for the next 12 months. And therefore, I think you should actually go out and get certified for them. You're gonna be able to consult on things like how to better secure an Azure environment and how to actually avoid risk as much as possible. So that's the first one. The second one is MD101. If you're an admin that's maybe looking after a lot of desktops, so maybe you are, we call them EUC here, an EUC engineer, maybe you are looking to really progress that group or maybe you really enjoy managing a fleet of desktops and you're using things like SCCM and maybe you're using some type of tool to build an image. This is really your path into the modern desktop world. As more and more organizations actually accept that hybrid work is here to stay despite what their CEOs want, these modern desktop deployments are becoming more and more popular. Why? Because it lets organizations manage their employees' data and their employees' desktop even when those employees are 100% remote. Something like Intrin can actually help you manage these desktops when they're remote, just as if you were on-premises using SCCM and an on-premises domain. So again, this is one of those things where I have just seen a big push from many organizations to get off the traditional SCCM type deployment using imaging software and actually using something like modern desktop or something like Intune. Deploying Windows clients, managing identity and access, managing compliance policies and config profiles, managing, maintaining and protecting devices and managing applications. So these are all things that you will typically be doing inside another type of software. I keep saying SCCM, but I'm sure there's many others out there. Things like GPOs and security profiles and things like that, they can all be moved into a modern desktop type set up now and I think that is the way that most organizations are going to go and eventually everyone's just going to be using things like Intune to manage those devices. So definitely one that you should really consider if you're looking to stay in that space. A lot of people I know sort of sit in that desktop type space and they want to move into server infrastructure but I have noticed a shift over the past couple of years where those people actually want to do something more cloud related and it seems like natural progression to go from a environment that's managed on-premises into cloud and therefore actually getting certified for things like managing modern desktops. All right, this one is gonna be controversial. Power Platform Fundamentals. Now over the past 12 months, the Power Platform and the Power Environment in general in Microsoft Space has grown immensely. There is lots more integration, there is lots more opportunity and there was just so much potential for organizations and customers to actually use these tools more and more. Power Platform basically allows organizations to create things like applications integration using low code and manageable by the customer themselves. Maybe if an organization wants to develop a little annual leave or little holiday scheduling type application, they might use something like this. Maybe if they want to actually create an integration between two platforms in two different environments, then Power Automate can be the integration platform. It's picking up pace very quickly. We are getting asked a lot of questions about Power Automate, Power Apps, and the Power Platform in general. I think that this is one that you should really consider. Power Platform Fundamentals is not going to make you an expert in Power Platform. And I don't think you really need to be. I think it's very important to understand how you can use it, especially if you are in the consulting space. You don't want to be asked questions by your customers about the Power Platform and have no real answer for them. I mean, I'm not saying that you need to go and deploy these things, but you should really be able to consult on them and talk about how you can actually utilize them in that customer's scenario or in that customer's environment. If there is any sort of area that Microsoft is going to intertwine with chat GPT, it's probably going to be the Power Platform. I can just see it being a API or a functionality inside Power Automate or Power Apps or even one of those Power Virtual Agents. So what is actually in this exam? Describing the business value of Power Platform. So what I just said, basically just understanding how a business or an organization can benefit from using Power Platform. Identifying the core components and how you can use them. So again, understanding what is available how you can actually implement that in organization and how you can actually utilize it to the best of its ability. Also going to demo the capability of Power BI. I think this one is a bit weird. I actually think Power BI should be separate 
to the power platform in terms of certification anyway. I think this one would be good to know. I don't know how beneficial it is. Most organizations that have a big data play or a Power BI play usually have dedicated consultants or dedicated teams because they're usually at that size where they can afford that. Demo the capability of Power Apps. This is pretty cool. So you should be able to understand how to actually create a little small Power App. Doesn't mean you have to do it, but just to understand what it takes to do so. You know, one of those Hello World type app. Power Automate, this is pretty cool so if you understand this you can sort of think about many ways to actually utilize it power automate is really good at integrating multiple platforms together so even for example if you want to copy an email based on a certain condition from your Outlook to your SharePoint every time that email comes in, that's something that Power Automate can do. It's an integration platform essentially. So understanding what that can do and demoing the capability of that. Demo capability of Power Virtual Agents. This one is even new to me. I don't really know too much about these virtual agents, but again, if a customer asks me, I want to know, so I'm going to probably do this exam as well. So again, these are just one of those things where a little bit of study and a little bit of understanding will help you build a better relationship with the customer. So that's it, we're only gonna review three this year. I think you should pick one of those depending on the field that you're in and you should really study one of those certifications this year. Either three of those will actually help you immensely in your career in 2023. I think that it's important to know the information and it's important to show that you know the information by having a certification. And as well, like I mentioned before, the other ones are bread and butter. Don't forget, you need your Azure and 365 administrator certification so you can prove that you know what you know. I hope that was valuable. If it was, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.